Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight. In the last video, we learned all about the brand new multi-tap delay from Steinberg, but it was a long one. So we're gonna give you a break. This video is gonna be much shorter, but equally as important, and it's gonna be about templates. If you save your templates incorrectly, you could end up with some massive file sizes for something that's basically just an empty project. So let's dive in and find out a little bit more about it. For those of you who are brand new to templates, we talked about these briefly in some of the earlier episodes, so you may want to go back and check those out. We're going to start with an existing project that we've been working on, and we start up with the familiar Steinberg Hub. Everything on the left is all your news and updates, and the tabbed window on the right here gives you all the recent projects you've done, and under recording, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see the Cubase choices for the basic templates. You can choose any one of these, and there are a ton of different things to start with. If you've upgraded from a previous version of Cubase, you may see some of your older templates that you created then in this same folder area. We've got some scoring ones to choose from and some production ones as well. Uh, these cover a bunch of different genres and they're great for getting you up and running quickly where you don't want to set up a ton of different effects and routing right at the beginning. You just want to get up and working. Even a mastering template to choose from. And under the more tab, you're going to see the user project templates that you've created. So for now, let's go ahead and choose other and open up our own project. Here we've got a big project that we're getting down to the finished part of the mix on. Sounds like this. All right, as you can hear, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and we don't want to change anything, but we want to be able to use this for the starting point of our next project. So we want to keep everything intact, including all the routing, all the effects, all the choices, all the mixing, everything. We want it exactly the way it is right now, and we want to just be able to start from here. So traditionally, we would start first by getting rid of all the audio. We'll come up here and we'll select one of the tracks and select all the audio on the project, delete it, and then from here, go up to our file, and choose save as template here. We'll call it template test one. And then we'll save that into our templates folder. Now it's time to use that same template to start a new project with and find out why this is a really bad idea. All right, so now let's start a brand new project in Cubase, get the Steinberg hub again. And over on the right-hand side, we see the templates that are in our library at the moment. So the one that we just wrote here, templates test one, we're gonna create a brand new project with that template. Here is our completely empty project with our template and all of our routing and everything intact. However, if we go up to the media tab and open the pool window, the first thing we see is every single one of those audio tracks that were in our old project now have become permanently a part of this template, which means every time we use this template, we are going to end up with some massive file sizes because it's going to be carrying around all these files on its back every single time we make a project out of that template. So let's go back and do it the right way. All right, so we're back in our original project. And as you can see, a few things need to be done to make sure that that template gets saved correctly. And let's start where we left off before. We're first gonna select all the audio. So that's Command A on a Mac and then Control A on a Windows keyboard. And then we'll delete that. And then before we do anything else, we're gonna go up to the Media Bay tab and we're gonna open the Pool window. And here we're gonna see all of that audio that made up the size of that template, that massive size template that we have here. So we wanna click on all of that audio and we wanna drag that into the trash down here in the trash icon. So now audio and video both are empty. There's nothing in there, but if we down arrow on the trash, we can see all of that audio is in our trash, temporarily in our trash. We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna control A, we're gonna select all of that. We're gonna click, right click, and then we're gonna empty the trash. And it's gonna give us two choices here. And this is super important right here. We definitely do not want to erase anything. We're simply gonna remove it from the pool. We want the files to stay on the disk because these are the actual audio files used in the project. If we erase them, they're gone for good. We simply wanna remove them from the pool, which keeps them from becoming part of our actual template. And we're not gonna to spend too much time in here either because the more time we spend and the more things we do at this stage, it's gonna start creating backup versions of this project in your project folder. And we don't want that either. So we wanna get in, erase the files, erase them out of the pool, and then go directly to our file tab, navigate down to save as template and save our project template immediately. We're simply gonna name this template test two, and then it's time to move on and check our work. 
All right, let's start up Cubase again. We're going to choose New Project, and this time we're going to scroll down to our second template, and that's template test number two. Let's create a brand new project with that template. Goes through its initialization and starts up our completely empty project. So we've got everything we had before, all the same routing and everything is intact. Only now when we go up to our media tab and we open the pool window, we'll see that the audio and video and trash, more importantly, is completely empty. And this truly is a brand new project with no audio in it whatsoever, which means every time we build a project off of this, we're not carrying around all those orphan files attached with it as well. And we haven't disturbed the real ones from the real project. They're still safe on a Mac. If you want to find the location of the Cubase project templates, simply go to applications, scroll down to Cubase and right click and show package contents. Click the contents button and navigate down to project templates. To find the user project templates that you've created, scroll up to the Finder toolbar and choose Go. And if you're on a Mac and you press the Option key, you'll be able to see the library. Choose Library, scroll down to Preferences, and then from the Preferences tab, scroll down to Cubase, and then choose your version of Cubase, and scroll down to Project Templates. Here you'll find all your user templates that you've created. Same thing applies on a Windows computer. To find the default project templates, simply go to your system drive, choose program files, scroll down to Steinberg, and then navigate down to your current version of Cubase. Then simply scroll down to project templates. These are all the default Cubase project templates if you want to copy or back them up. And finally, on a Windows machine, if you want to back up your own user project templates, simply navigate to the system drive, click on users, go up to your computer name, go from there to app data, and then navigate down to roaming. From there, scroll down to Steinberg, and then navigate down to your current version of Cubase, and simply click on the Project Templates tab. From here, you'll see all of your custom user project templates, and you can back them up, copy them, and store them where you need them. So there you have it, how to create and save your own custom project templates the right way. Hey, if you learned anything or if this was helpful in any way, please remember to hit the subscription tabs and the notification bell, and we will catch you guys in the next video.